We are kind of late in talking about this. But, at the end of the day, this still is important, and it's a rumor that did pop up in the cycle of Vancouver Canucks-related news, so I decided to make a video about it now. Sure, it's maybe a week late, but at the end of the day, we're not really going to see this type of thing manifest until after the season and after the playoffs, so I think it's kind of okay. Let's head over to the Canucks and talk about what their apparent plan in the offseason is in regards to guys they might want to sign. To help us out, we're going over onto Rick Dollywall from Donnie and Dolly from a few days ago. Again, I did say this was from a while ago. This is literally from March 23rd. So over a week ago, this was a clip that's on the show. It's actually linked in the description if you want to go ahead and watch it. It's about a two-minute segment from Donnie and Dolly, where Rick Dollywell kind of lays the scoop as to what the Canucks are targeting. Take a look at the tweet preview. The Canucks are making it very clear that a third-line center is a target on July 1st. Now, third-line center, why is that? Well, firstly, it makes sense because the Vancouver Canucks heading into this season had themselves three centers that were all pretty good. Elias Pettersson, JT Miller, and Bo Horvat. Now, unfortunately, Bo is no longer here, and so in the third line spot, you have yourselves a pretty interesting rotation of guys coming in and out of the lineup. If you go over to the Canucks and their lines on dailyfaceoff.com, you can kind of see just what I'm talking about here. Petey's the first line center, Miller's a second line center, Allman is the third line center, and Dries is the fourth line center. Now, no disrespect to Niels Allman or Sheldon Dries, but having either of these guys as your third line center is probably not ideal. Again, no disrespect to Niels Allman, he actually has been playing a lot better recently than he was at the start of the year, let's just say. But Rick Dollywell goes out there and says that the Canucks are targeting a third line guy, and this is what... He lays out as to who exactly that could be. Now, to help us out, we're going over onto the hockey writers because what Sartage Boular did was they summarized what it was that Dollywall said on this Canucks news and rumors, Hronik, Barbashev, Gavrikov, and more piece. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article in full, too. Take a look at the segment in the middle of this article. The Canucks are planning to target Barbashev and Gavrikov in free agency. Rick Dollywell said the Canucks are making it very clear that a third-line center is a target in free agency. The Canucks will have to clear up cap space through trades and buyouts since the club is over the cap limit for next season. He named Vegas Golden Knights forward and center Barbashev as a player of interest. The pending UFA posted 14 goals and 38 points in 72 games with the Golden Knights and the Blues. Okay, we're gonna look at that a little bit later, just go over the numbers and whatnot. The Blues traded him to the Golden Knights for prospect Zach Dean. There also is a write-up about Vladislav Gavrikov as a target for the Canucks. Pending UFA, CBJ guy traded over to LA for Jonathan Quick with Jonas Corposalo. Barbashev and Gavrikov are both clients of Dan Milstein, who was the agent of Andrei Kuzmenko, and Ilya Mikheyev, and a whole bunch of other guys, Max Sasson too, I believe. Dollywell previously mentioned the Canucks brought up both players when they met with Milstein during negotiations for Kuzmenko's contract extension. The Canucks will look to improve their blue line by targeting Gavrikov and adding help on their third line with Ivan Barbashev. Now, Gavrikov is a conversation in and of itself, but I wanted to focus more so on Barbashev here. Because when it comes to what Barbashev has accomplished the past few months, it's been pretty interesting seeing how he's taken his career from 29 points in 59 St. Louis Blues games this season to 13 points in 17 Vegas Golden Knights games post-trade. He has been pretty good for that team. And it's no surprise, or it shouldn't be a surprise anyway, because he had a 60-point year last year in 21-22, in fact, Barbashev has had a really interesting career trajectory. He was initially drafted back in 2014, so this is quite a while ago, literally a decade ago. Was up and down with the Blues and the Chicago Wolves, never really found himself that consistency to be a top guy, but I don't want to say the expectations were too high, mostly because he was a second-round guy that happened to have pretty good QMJHL numbers. It's just as his career went on, he eventually became a full-time Blue, had multiple 20-point years, there was a 12-point year thrown in there too, in 38 games played. And then he exploded last season. 60 points, as we had said. The Blues had themselves a season where Barbashev ended up being one of their top players, but the problem was he needed a contract extension post-2023. 
So with the Blues falling out of the playoff race as they did, they started selling everybody off. Ryan O'Reilly, Vladimir Tarasenko, Barbashev as we're talking about here. And even though he did have some down numbers in St. Louis in 22-23, his numbers have really risen back up with the Vegas Golden Knights. 13 points, 17 games played. If you go over to the Knights and their lines, let's search VGK lines here on Daily Faceoff. Barbashev is currently in the top of their lineup. He's playing in the first line with Jack Eichel and Jonathan Marcheseau as a left wing. And I mean, look, the points kind of tell it all. He's doing a pretty good job in that role. And so, if the Vancouver Canucks were to try to get a guy like this and put him on their third line, maybe play him with Mikheyev or something, have a Russian connection there, then it does kind of intrigue me as to what the possibilities could be. Of course, Barbashev is 20... what is he going to be, 27? Yeah, he's 27 right now, and he turns 28 in December, so halfway through 2023-2024. That doesn't really scream best timeline for building this Canucks team and making the prime years of Petey and Hughes a little bit better because Barbashev is a little on the older side. However, he is kind of in that same age territory as Andre Kuzmenko, so if you wanted to make that argument that, okay, if the Canucks are trying to win in the short term, if they're trying to make the playoffs next year, which, based off of the comments made by the GM and the coach and everybody, it appears that that's the case, then okay, cool. Another year of not tanking and instead trying to capitalize on the talent you already have. As we have talked about in prior videos, Miller, Petey, and Hughes are all crazy good talents, plus that Dacher Demko in there. These guys can carry your team. It's just the supporting cast around them needs work, and guys like Tyler Myers and OEL, they're not cutting it and being able to do what they're able to do for the amount of money they cost. It's ultimately a problem in Vancouver, just the management of how money has been handled here. And so heading into this offseason, Besser, Garland, OEL buyout, Tyler Myers trades, who really knows what's going to happen here to free up the necessary money to be able to sign guys like Ivan Barbashev, who will probably demand a pretty penny, and make the deal look worthwhile. Barbashev is really talented, and this is a player that if you want to have him on your third line, I honestly kind of fear the Canucks may have a similar Bo, JT, and Elias situation like they had last season again. Because, I mean, look, with Bo Horvat and Miller all on center, you needed to have at least one of these guys playing third line. And unfortunately for Boudreaux, he had sort of a system where Miller was playing on the wing and it wasn't really working all too well. Miller had a very bad start to this season. But now as a center, I feel like he's been playing a lot better, mostly because he has more ice to cover. But again, we'll see what happens when the Canucks go into the free agency pool next year. Barvashev is a really good player playing for Vegas, and he's been on that top line for a reason. Despite the down year, he was a very talented player in St. Louis, especially last season with that 60-point year, but I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as to whether or not the Canucks could benefit from this type of guy. Where do you think he slots into the lineup? Do you really want to put him as third-line center? Do you want to try him maybe second-line left wing? Because he is playing with Eichel right now, and he's looking pretty good. What are your thoughts on the idea of the Canucks signing him in the first place? Do you like this move? Do you not like this move? Would you prefer the Canucks to use their money elsewhere? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.